Yo guys, it's Red Marvel here, back again with another video, and I'm joined by HH from Have Hope's Hut. You may know him as the football analyst, but here he is, the entertainment specialist. And yeah. frankly, he's joining me on my channel, and we're here to dissect the future of the MCU. Bro, how are you doing? And thanks for coming on. You know, man, I'm here. I'm here. Like I said again, it's, it's, it's good to have a bit of refreshing from the whole football thing, man. And like... People keep asking me that. Man, what do you think about what do you think about, about, about Loki? And I've been trying to build up to doing like yeah. an overall recap things. So I think, yeah. I think I because I just I need someone with a bit more knowledge to steer me in the right direction yeah. so I can give my yeah. my thoughts. So yeah, I'm going to be interested to really try and break this down, man. Yeah, yeah. So obviously you can see the thumbnail. I think this was the the big reveal in the, in the Loki recap. But before we even get into it, like, what were your thoughts just on the Loki series as a whole? Like just as a standalone. You know, Marvel TV series compared to say One Division, uh, uh, Winter Soldier, and um, uh, and Falcon stuff like that. Okay, now look. If we're ranking it, mm. I would say Winter Soldier. Um, uh, so see, basically Winter Soldier and Falcon one. This okay. two. Okay. And right at the bottom, <laughs> below the sewer, below hell, <laughs> below Krypton, is that piece of garbage trash called Wonder Vision. Because for me, Wonder Vision was garbage. Hmm. Like, you you can't promise something and then just give nothing. I mean, like, it, is, it was literally one of the most pointless TV shows I've ever seen. Like, it was a yeah. waste of my time. So it's difficult because that's why when we bring it, because I think in some aspects, Loki was better than Winter Soldier. Mm. I'm thinking because it was more daring and yeah. it was a lot more bold. But I felt that the Winter Soldier thing, it was more tight. Yeah. And and told a much tighter, complete story. Although yeah. this was much more dynamic, much crazier, and was really yeah. getting into much interesting directions. Yeah. Even just comparing the entire piece, I would yeah. say the entire piece was much was much tighter mm. with Winter Soldier than it was with, with, with this. Although this gave some very interesting concepts. You know, I think one of the things that I like about this in the recap is that what I noticed is that like a lot of this was held by like char it was character plot driven. So with Winter Soldier and the Falcon, you know, there was a lot of action sequences, a lot of fight sequences, mm. a lot of you know, which is fair, which is cool, and I like that. But with this movie, there weren't that many what I would call action sequences. A lot of like very like oh wow, I remember this stuff. Even like the last episode, which we're going to probably go into like later. It was pretty much Kang basically just telling them, like, this is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to be, etc. Mm. And yet people say this is one of the best episodes they've ever seen. So it's it's it was nice to say, like, you know what? You can actually write a good, you know, movie, uh, movie, TV series, whatever. Like, if you just have a good script with good with good characters, like, you know, Owen Wilson with the Mobius and the chemistry that mm. he had with Loki. If you've got, you know, good actors with a good script, you can actually... You know do good things as opposed to necessarily have to feel that you have to drive the plot by going from one action sequence to the next, but, but, next, next to the next. I think, but there's a big difference between TV and movies. Mm. I think that there's been a massive shift in people. Same thing with pod, pod podcasting, more mm. people are now more into long form than short mm. form. Mm. So, because TV is long form, people mm. are willing to have more patience. So mm cool you need 10 episodes to tell your story we will actually invest the time because yeah, yeah. what's what's it at home and everything as opposed to i'm going to a cinema and you have two hours to entertain mm -hmm. me my kids and so forth and if you're not entertaining me in the first 15 minutes cool first two episodes cool you're building up because i think you have a lot more time so, so the tv format allows guys to really create stories that build up a lot more slower you're not going to be given that time in a two hour window yeah. And so forth. So I just that that is what has really helped this because again, I think this was again we'll, we'll probably go into into detail. This mm -hmm. could have really mm -hmm. gone into very interesting places. Yeah, and it's really because again, like I think the, I was um, reading what the showrunner said, and I think she said that she was inspired by Seven, mm -hmm. the film. Okay. Because she wanted it to be like a very kind of complex detective yeah. kind of what's happening kind of thing where, you know, you're yeah. really just like letting one, one, one. Like, okay, yeah. And you yeah. could really, like this was, as I said, this was the most daring out of all the three. You know, One Division was just a, a, a piece of crap. Captain America was just telling a very specific kind of story of, oh, this right. guy's not taking up on the mantle. 
This mm-hmm. was all. Oh, let's now go multi-dimensional, a bit weird. I must, and I must confess, AJ, I must confess, in that last, maybe I'm in a minority, mm-hmm. and I love the fact that Falcon's Winter Soldier, but the manner in which she received the shield, I was like, uh, you know... No, no, it's, it, okay, if you want to be real, I told you, if you want to uh, be real on this whole thing, I'll be real with you. Yeah. The the ringtone on my phone is the Captain America ring ringtone. Mm. Captain America First Avenger, I would say, is top three of my favorite comic book mm. movies of all time. So for me, I'd say it's the first Batman film. Mm. Then it's probably followed by First Avenger. Mm, well, Sin City, then okay. probably First Avenger. But no, I'd probably say mm. First Avenger is probably my second favorite. So Batman is my favorite. Second mm. favorite. So I love that movie. Bro, mm. I don't know. I don't recognize that guy as Captain America. Nah. Okay. Fal- nah. Okay. Nah, no, I, I don't. Okay. And people go, like, oh my gosh, <laughs> but you're black. He's black. Black, black, black. I don't give it down. I'm sorry. Like, yeah, like remember that's the final episode with when he's making that massive speech? Yeah. Shh, man, can you just wrap it up? Yeah. Bro? I ju- yeah just, I was like, was, oh, come on. It just oh, the, the, and, and even just the, the, I mean, this isn't like a captain who can like, like break down or anything. So, but I mean, yeah. I, I think just, no, no, but, just, but I think it's good because it's mm, comparing it's comparing this because mm, I think yeah, One Division tried to do One Division was tried to be daring, but mm. it just sort of fell flat and, and just it just it, it then it, just regurgitated the payoff, into the trash. The yeah, payoff for the, the end didn't, didn't didn't make any sense. Yeah, horrible. No, because the first few episodes are okay. Cool. Where are you going with this? This is interesting. Mm, but mm. then afterwards, like, oh, we're just going to go back and do an MC. Mm. Captain America Winter sorry, sorry um, Falcon Winter Soldier was were just telling. What we're trying to sell you as to how mm. this guy will be the next Captain America. Mm. It was done well with some good things, but I just didn't buy him as the whole mm. thing. This mm. was, you see, this was what One Division tried to do, Indeed, but yeah. failed to do, which is that yeah. we're, we're going totally different here, something crazy. Mm. And it's actually paid off with like a very interesting final episode that really yeah. has great permutations. Yeah. So I think Loki succeeded where One Division failed. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think that, like, the, the you know, you're taking a villain, because that's people, Loki's a villain. Loki's a villain, so do. This is a guy who was, he, he was, and this was the version of Loki that was taken from. And that's where I found this was, was interesting, because this was the version of Loki that was obviously taken directly um, from the first Avengers movie into. So he's not experienced, you know, for Ragnarok, his mother dying, um, uh, Odin dying. Um, you know, the whole Thanos decimation or the rest of it. He's literally just come off the back of, I try to screw over the Avengers and now I've got the test right and I should feel like a boss. Um, so to then see, you know, what would become of him. And I think, and, you know, asking you this question, HH, H- like, do you feel that with this series of Loki, do you feel that, um, you know, you like Loki has, imp- did you see Loki as a in a different light now? Like, is he now is a villain to you still? Is he an anti-hero, is he a hero? Like, how has his character progressed compared to, you know? See, 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 this is where I now put my whole creative brain and myself as a writer into it. Mm-hmm. I would never, this is a very interesting concept, but I would never make Loki the main character. Okay. Because he's a villain. Okay. So I found it hard accepting that he's now a protagonist okay. because I'm so used to him being an antagonist okay. because you're supposed to be that kind of scheming villain guys and so forth. But put that to one side, to be honest with you, he didn't really change that much for me. You know, okay. I think it was like, he is what he is. I try to give him sort of like a weird love interest, which is actually really him, him himself and so forth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is also, also, also weird. It's wild. I know, but, but my thing is that, yeah, it's, he didn't like, from the start of episode one to the end of this episode, episode six, I didn't feel like if, oh, I've now seen him in a different light. I've now seen mm-hmm. him sort of change. It just seems like, oh, yeah, there have been events that have happened to him, but I don't feel like, oh, this guy has not sort of changed and turned into something new. So, so I mean, let's, because I mean, you, obviously, before you even lie, we're talking about like, the last episode is basically like everyone's freak, 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 freaked out when they saw this guy, when they saw mm. Kang, obviously. Um, and like it, and it's like basically going to start popping off, you know? So mm. did, what was your, cause it, what was your sort of take initially sort of from it? Like, do you understand kind of the significance of it? Of it? Like what was the, oh, no. um, yeah, no, no, no. So, yes. So, I mean, 
like when it first happened, I was like, mm. and this is where I've actually watched this about three or four, four times now. Yeah, that's that's yeah. the scene. So yeah. the first time I watched it, I was like, I was taken aback by his acting. I was yeah, like, yeah. oh, this seems a bit campy, weird. So that sort of threw mm. me off. Mm -hmm, so because mm -hmm. that threw me off so much, I didn't really understand what he was saying. Okay. Then when I watched it again and I understood about all the variants, I was like, oh no, he's a yeah. particular variant. Yeah. So he's just acting this particular way because yeah. he's a, the particular version of the judge. So, okay, cool. Yeah. Then when I watched yeah. it again and again, I was like, ah, I now understand. And I think that, yeah. you see, this is where we now talk about Marvel. Yeah. And the drawback of what Disney can do because the possibilities are crazy. Yeah. Because my thinking is, I don't know, is, oh, Spider-Man's stony thing, he'll he'll show up. Yeah. He'll show up in Spider-Man. Yeah. He's going to yeah. show up in other films and they're going to yeah. be all different variants. And yeah. what they're going to have to do is his evil variant is going to be so crazy. Then yeah. I have to now go into a particular timeline to get a better variant to help stop him because yeah. he's too he's too mad. So yeah. what you're going to be seeing is just different versions of this dude in yeah. different timelines. Yeah. So it's sort of now explicit. It now takes the Thanos concept to a whole different level because yeah. you're not dealing yeah. with like a you're dealing with a wizard. Like Thanos was just strong and everything, but now you're not dealing with an intelligent mm. wizard who has yeah. magical abilities. So yeah it now really says hence why wonder vision hence why because you now have to now bring in magic so dr mm -hmm. strange wonder vision so for dr strange so, man after oh. uh, dr strange <laughs> after after the loki and 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 one division finale dr strange like bro man like what 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 yeah, can i even do like, no no what? it's 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 i mean it's, it's a complete mess because i think because i always felt that Okay, so Iron Man's dead. Captain America is super old. Who now leads the Avengers? Captain so, Marvel. <laughs> please. Do, do, do you know what's funny? You know, you know, I still haven't watched that film. Yeah, it's it's. Uh... I, I, I still haven't. Like ever since I had what happened, what they did to Nick Fury, I refused to watch 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 watch, watch the film. So screw screw that yeah, piece of trash. Awesome. So my thing. So you have possibility is. So you have you need, you need a leader to go up against this this dude. So mm. is it Black Panther? Mm. It, can, it can be it can be Black Panther because of Chadwick Boseman. Mm. So your choices are um, Black America, mm. um, aka Captain America, Black America, mm. or just call him Black Falcon, Black Falcon, mm. um, Spider Man, or Doctor Strange. So see, I don't think because well, okay, I'll say two. I say two things. I think the first thing is that I don't think that Kang is going to be uh the big bad in the next avengers movie i think uh, he's apparently he's, he's going to be an ant man or he's going to be make a cameo there yeah, but i don't think he's gonna, but i don't think he's going to be the big i don't think you're going to see kang's a type of villain where he's quite meticulous and i don't mm. think you're going to see the real full totality of what he has planned at least the evil variants of, of, of kang until probably maybe maybe the fifth possibly maybe sixth avengers movie because they seem to hint um, towards a because the reason obviously why I think the uh, this Kang in episode six who according to the comics is called like I think he's like a villain of Immortus like the one yeah, who yeah, remains yeah, yeah. or something mm, mm. um so yeah. he's basically oh, yeah. the last he, one he, at the who end of remains. Time. he who remains yeah. he remains at the end of time um and he obviously talked about this multiversal conflict that ha that happens in the future so the impression I'm getting is that essentially what they're saying is that at some point in the future there's going to be another multiversal conflict or war like mm. led by the kang variants of different multiverses which i would expect is not going to happen so like it's, 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 this is this one i need to ask you something to mm. clear things up so yeah when sylvie killed mm. that variant yeah so that's disrupted the main timeline or because because my thing is that's okay how did that create what loki saw which was the statue that I, 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 I assume is the evil so, variant. So what I think happened, because obviously there was only the one timeline, which this this main Kang was was pruning, getting rid of mm. that. Obviously, because they killed him, there was no, there's no more pruning. There's just like uh, uh, variants going, uh, variant demon timelines going around. And I think what happened is that when Sylvie kicked um, uh, Loki through the teleporter thing, like mm. he didn't go to the time the main timeline as the word he's gone to a completely different timeline mm. so where in, the, in this particular timeline you know you have this you know because because the uh obviously um oh it's like who are you 
Who are you? I don't yeah, know who yeah, you yeah. are. He doesn't know. Know. It's a different so, timeline. Yeah. A different yeah. timeline where probably look where where maybe Loki wasn't there. Like in maybe in this timeline, Loki is I don't know, I don't know, a cat or a frog or whatever. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like yeah, something yeah. different. And he's just come in and then like and he's like, oh, oh, it's about to pop off because this is like the time where Kang is. But what you find is that in the in the timeline that Kang, this evil Kang is in, and that's the thing that this immortal is trying to prevent, it was like, whoa. The thing you need to be real is that this evil Kang will now jump into a different timeline. It's why it's mm. going to get crazy because you can have different jumping into different timelines to try and start stuff when they mm. when they become aware of said timelines. Um, but I think the one of the big, from a purely um, uh, entertainment point of view for Marvel is that like you now because I think one of the biggest issues that coming was had is like oh you've got all these different properties all these different remakes reboots all the rest of it you now have complete creative freedom because you can now say you can now incorporate almost every other version of uh, the Fantastic Four or Avengers or such so you can say oh you know the Fantastic Four from 2004 that was a different mm. universe Oh, yeah, so yeah. If you ever want to reference those things or bring those things in, mm. like, oh, the X-Men, Fox X-Men, oh, that was a different universe. Mm. So rather than having to constantly come up with convoluted explanations and reboots and remakes, mm. you can just say, oh, that's a different universe. Oh, and, yeah. no, and I think that is what people are sort of alluding to in Spider-Man, which is that if we are not going to multiverse, or maybe the whole idea is, oh, Andrew Garfield, Spider-Man, to my guys, Spider-Man are all going to come into con conflict somehow. Mm -hmm. And maybe this event, because obviously the TV shows are all linked in with the movies as well, mm -hmm. which, which, which isn't what they used to do. Because I think they said like the Netflix shows were, were separate. Yeah. But these TV shows right now that they've now done are now going to be linked in. So obviously if this has happened, that means it has now ruptured and affected yeah. um, all the other properties as well. So, so I mean, but... Do you think that Sony are in on this as well? This whole, oh, whatever MC are doing? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, when you see, I mean, I would not be surprised because I think Venom 2 is coming out this year, if I'm correct. Yeah, um, with Carnage, Carnage yeah. and stuff like that. And I would not be surprised if you saw... Well, we already, no, well, we already saw it. We already saw it because I think in the trailer, if I remember in the Venom 2 trailer, you saw um, uh, there was a cameo for Vulture. The MCU oh, version yes. of Vulture. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So, oh yeah. So they've yeah. so they've already they've, they've already almost alluded to it. The fact that mm. there is going to be some crossover, whether that's that Venom is made in the main MCU or whether it's a different outside. I don't mm -hmm. know, but but it sounds like they're going to incorporate it. But but you mentioned a good point with the whole T thing, and and this is where it, there might be a, there might be a criticism here, and I'm interested to see what your thoughts are on that. Before, one of the things that people liked about the MCU was just being able to sort of go into the movie, um, go into the and not necessarily have to know, which is one of the good things about the Netflix shows, because you didn't necessarily have to know what was going on mm. to enjoy what you saw. Mm. But now we're getting to the point where, like, you know, this is a major event that was revealed in Loki at six uh, in, in this episode with Kang and the, and the ramifications. So you can't tell me that going into Ant-Man or the other movies that you can't not have to watch this Loki TV series. And I guess what I'm trying to say is that, do you think this is a negative thing where Disney are now saying, listen, if you want to get the full MCU experience, mm. you're going to have to subscribe to Disney Plus, you're going to have to watch our movies, you're going to have to do this and you have to go and do that. You know, and is that going to be a negative thing going forward? You see, my thing is, first of all, like this is... This is because remember, this was what happened. It used to happen in the comics. Like in the comics, it was where everything was interlinked and so forth. And then you had to buy this comics issue and everything because everything was one larger story. Mm. And this is what, what Kevin Feige did. Like it could be an, a negative thing mm. if the films were not popular. Mm -hmm. So the films were not popular. People were like, oh, geez, I'm lost. Wait, what the hell is happening? Blah, blah, blah. But because the films are so popular and they are known so well, like a lot of people, I think would have watched Loki, mm. but the but the but the thing though is, I think that if you have a talented, clever writer, you don't need to have seen this. Mm. All you need to know is that oh, there was this massive event, even mm. in one scene. Mm. If if you have a good screenwriter, all you need to do is just in one scene, oh, massive events, Kang. Things have split, boom. Okay, mm. cool. 
and everything. And I, and I think that's if you're, because you have to ask, you can't just assume that everybody has seen this, you know, because mm. this is this is Marvel and this is MC, mm. this is like a billion dollars. So you are mm. really appealing to the mom, the kids, yeah. the, the regular person. The regular person mm. isn't necessarily going to watch the low-key TV show, but they're mm -hmm. going to watch the big, massive Avengers thing. So you need to be able mm -hmm. to tell them, okay, cool, let's just freshen them up because you can't just assume everyone is going to has watched all these TV shows, you know. And, and I think that because I was just watching like an like an episode of someone explaining this because I don't know what you think about this. Is that mm -hmm. how do you think the general public have received these TV shows as opposed to the MCU films? Interesting. In your view. Interesting. Um, I mean, I guess from people, like, because if Twitter, like, if Twitter is anything, to, if Twitter is anything hmm. to go by, generally, I think, I think quite, I think quite positive. Um, but like, I wouldn't necessarily say that like there are like, like, like families are watching hmm. are like want to and, and putting on Loki and putting on Captain America Winter Soldier. So I think there is an element of you know the TV shows still seem to be more for like. The hardcore fans, maybe some of the casual sort of fans, but not necessarily sort of the families, as it, as mm. it were. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, because, because again, like my thing is, these TV shows are very different from the MCU films. Yeah, like the MCU films are very easy to digest. They're very simple yeah. and so forth. As opposed to, yeah. you see, because even all three of them, like Wonder Vision, it's okay. You're wearing a TV show, and we're, really, and we're dealing with like psychological PTSD. I mean, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, it's espionage, it's a bit much more real and so forth. Loki, this is space, multidimensional, very sci-fi science fiction. So they're, they're not very mass appealing. Fine. So hence why I don't think these TV shows have really been made to appeal to the general masses as opposed to the, an Avengers, where, oh, anybody can jump in and watch an Avengers. Yeah, can yeah. anyone jump in and watch and understand a Loki that's really dealing with a lot of sci-fi, science fiction, a lot of jargon? Yeah. Like, like it's got, it's imagine, like, it's, like, my, this is funny, like, my cousin, 12-year-old cousin, has just begun to watch, like, Marvel shows now, mm. and she was just talking about how, because we, we were having an argument about Captain America and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> I think I'm so, that's, yeah, no, because she, she, she's, like, really into it, and I can't imagine her getting into Loki. Yeah. Or really understanding the permutations yeah. of Loki, because she's 12, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, like, she thinks she knows everything, but she's she's, she's only 12, so... I think, I think as well, I think as well, like, a lot of the, the TV shows, they, they deal with a lot, maybe more of a, often, in quote, deeper concepts. Because mm. so, in this, in this, in this TV series, in Loki, the big kind of thing was almost like free will versus predeterminism. That was always the kind of, sort of, the underlying term, like, do we have free will or are things prede predetermined? Because Loki's whole beef was, well, I have glorious purpose. So I should be able to sort of, and then to sort of come into the TVA and to be told, well, actually, no, your purpose is just basically to just make other people better. Mm. Um, I've already predetermined that things will go. And that, I think, and I think that for me was the most powerful um, mm. part well, of like this, 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 this episode six is when he literally goes to Sylvie and Loki's like, yeah, I have all this, all literally everything that you said written down here. Everything mm. went according to my plan. They're kind of like, and obviously Sylvie, who didn't, I don't know about who you thought of HH. I was, I was going to ask characters in terms of who do you thought were your, your favorite characters in this and who you feel were your worst characters oh, in this I show. Mean, I'll be wrong with you. I really, I, okay, okay, well, let's be, I didn't like Sylvie at all. Okay. I found her really annoying. Really liked the Owen Wilson character. Yeah, like that was a great, great yeah. casting. I yeah. liked the character played by you know, um, Google and both are raw. Um, yeah, the the George. I thought that character was good. I liked the have you, you know, and I think she was in BVS, um, giving the kind of thingy in the courtroom, like oh, a rain slayer, the uh, the the quite the, hefty lady with the that oh, one sorry, of, oh, yes. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think she's. A, I think she maybe South, South African actress. So yeah. She was really busy. The only character that I didn't like was the Sylvie character. I just thought it just, yeah. she just. Yeah, it just didn't rub yeah. off for me. I, I th but I thought like, when Wilson's character was like, no, this is like, yeah, he's. It's just great casting. Like just how yeah. he spoke how the character was. I don't know. This was really really good yeah. casting. So, um, I think you could have had him and him and 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 Tom Hod uh, Hoddleston, you know, just doing their thing for almost the whole. Have, uh, whole thing that's, have been fine you know because i think like for the first 
up until Sylvie showed up, I was like, oh no, mm. this is your show. Mm. Like just these two characters and yeah, them yeah. working off of each other. Yeah. They just had really great chemistry. Chemistry, yeah. And then, then when Sylvie came into it, I was like, uh, yeah, nah, I just don't feel the same kind of they stuff. That's no, no. They didn't have. They didn't really have the same chemistry, to be honest. And then she basically did a um a, a Star Lord moment in the fight in in, ep, in the final when you're like, oh yeah, yeah which is I still... don't believe him. My is like, you know, it's like, like he's just saying should... that uh, if you do this, you're going to destroy every. Yeah, I mean, like I'm I'm literally giving you like... a chance to actually conquer out of this. Yes, yeah, so no, no. Like for me, like that was. Because again, look, I'll keep it real with you. Like, um, have you seen, um, oh gosh, the real, the, the Five Bloods, Spike Lee mo mo movie? Not seen it, no, not seen it, man. Basically, he's, he's from, from, I've forgotten the actor's name, but mm. he's he's from, 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 from the film. So that's why I first saw him in. Because it's always so refreshing whenever you just see, like, look, a black guy. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, of course. Like right, that. Of course. Yeah, because yeah, because yeah. my thing is, like, you know, I'm always, because um, even that's, that was always my big when I was doing acting. It's like you know when I when I, when I was like wanting to be an actor, I was like, no, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to play the the so-called black guy, the yeah, thug, yeah, the gangster. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh wow, you now have a black villain. Yeah. And my thing about this is that it's just because this this could have easily been played by a white actor yeah. who would have done a great job, but it's expected. Mm -hmm. But because it's a black guy, he just brings a whole different vibe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And an aura that just felt, oh, this just feels very refreshing. Yeah. Yeah. And because for me, like the best thing about it was just him when, you know, he, he took his, his watch and he basically yeah. explained in visuals the yeah, whole yeah. thing with the variants, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, because my thing is, why would you put his evil variant in Ant Man 3? Like, yeah. I thought this, this is a great So, 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 so this, this, this thing, and this is, this is my fear behind it, is that like, we don't know. At what time? At what time period that this actually occurs? Because we're 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 thinking, oh, this happens after <laughs> Endgame and thing or whatever. Hmm. But obviously, the Loki was taken straight from Avengers from Avengers at, at the first Avengers. So hmm. all of this stuff that's going on, because obviously it, it, it occurs outside of time or whatever. We've seen the TV is outside of is outside of time. Hmm. Um, so it's not like this happened after Endgame. This mm. happened maybe technically has been going on in the background since well, we know because the I think in the first episode, Miss Minutes, who was, was yeah. scary in that thing by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just, just speaking about she basically like she basically says, Oh yeah, the whole because I think in the I'm sure it's in the first episode, he's like, Oh, why did you allow um the Avengers to go back in time and mess up and do their thing? And then he was like, Yeah, we allowed it to because that's how it's supposed to be. Mm. So my so my prep um uh, so when they, I think when they, when they went, when he's shown the video about them doing it. So my thing is that did this happen earlier on? And so this evil Kang thing or whatever has kind of always been there, been in the background. And then obviously he goes into Ant-Man and then he'll do, he'll do his thing. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, so, okay, so, so, so are you then making the argument that he, that's the evil variants wouldn't be the main villain? Because no, no, he he will be the main villain, but it's just that like he already he already probably exists in the MCU in the oh, MCU okay. timeline. So like so he so it's it's not so like where he, was he there? Because so, 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 so my thing, yeah. that, if let's say he was he existed during Avengers: Age of Ultron and so forth, like what was he doing there? So because from from the comics, Kang exists in the foot is he most for not he's comes from the thirty first century. Mm. So I'm assuming time period wise that in the MCU they're not in the 31st century. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, 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 yeah. So no, like, because so, they actually reference that, you know 2012, yeah. so forth, so everything. Exactly. So oh, okay, so so, my, so I, I assume what because the thing is, for my talking about the Ant Man movie, they're going to be in the microverse. So hmm. I don't think so. They've got to find a way that they're going to have to get into contact with Kang somehow. Hmm. And so the only way to see is that if somehow Kang obviously. He comes back in time to this particular mm. point, or he comes into this particular dimension, the microverse, mm. or whatever. That's how they sort of come into contact so, with so, him. So my thing is that so when or when he, he found all these variants and they were mm. having this multi-dimensional war, were they, were they having that war in the thirty-first century, or were they having that amongst centuries, or were they just leaping in and out of the? Because my thing is. Mm. Let's say there's an argument for him to be the major villain. How, how, or why would he want to come, go from the 31st century to the 21st? So that's so century, or, 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 unless 
there's an event that sends someone into the 31st. So that's maybe the, this whole, okay, sorry. So that's the, so that's the comics. That's that's where I think the comics come in because like in the comics, um, uh, Kang is basically called Nathaniel Richards. He's like basically a, a, a distant, distant descendant of Reed Richards from the Fantastic Four. And basically like the dude is, is so intelligent. And he's basically just conquered everything. Like, mm. uh, and essentially what happens is in the comics, it, it's like he basically just gets bored. He basically just gets absolutely bored. He has everything. So he decides to go back in time. Specifically, he goes back in time to about like ancient Egypt um, period of time and basically masquerades as this guy called Ramatut. Oh. Um, and in and in that instance, he this is this is actually where he becomes into contact with Apocalypse from the from the X Men. Mm. Like and he's and he's in, he's involved actually making Apocalypse who he is now. So that's another thing you potentially potentially see seeds of X Men from 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 Kang. Um, so that's one variant. But another an, another time, like he basically like um, he. He or he or he comes back. I'm going to get this right. I think he, he comes back again from the 31st century, mm. and then comes into contact with um, the Fantastic Four in their time. And then in that instance, he becomes Kang, and he keeps on coming back to and fro because he hasn't experienced defeat before. So he mm. loses to the hands of Avengers, and and then and then the Avengers are that now become aware of the fact that he's a, a dictator in the 31st century. So they now go to the third of century and it's almost this kind of tit for tat, tit for tat situation. But the problem is, and this is where Kang is like a really messed up character in the comics because mm. him constantly doing this time jumping things does, effectively causes the whole variant timeline things. So what eventually happens is that you just have the all these different Kangs in these different timeline variants that all have their own plan yeah. and they all kind of end up warring against each other to be the sort of supreme Kang. No, no, it's, I because mean, for me, it, it, I think that's... It's messed up. Yeah, no, 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 no. Like, yeah, like, the way in which they should go mm. is where there are multiple Kangs that these, oh, everyone is fighting. Mm. So Spider-Man fights a certain variant. Mm. Um... Falcon fights a certain variant. Mm. Strange fights a certain variant. And maybe Strange is the guy that says, look, man, we have all these things going through and our main aim is to try and to try and um, rectify this ruptured timeline mm. that's... Basically, everything is because of Sylvie. Sylvie, Sylvie basically effed everything up, yeah. you know. <laughs> like, I think Sylvie pretty much creates it's, this whole thing of where everything... Because of the, because you saw the timeline just basically branch yeah, out and go crazy. Branch out yeah. So... And 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 the we'll, we'll move on to the what's next what we think next for the MC, MC mm. in, in general and uh, next but like it's just how crazy this whole thing because the thing with time travel is that time travel can get messy really quickly yeah. especially when you're going different timelines so I generally hope they're able to handle this well because Kang in the comics is a really messed up character mm. he's really really messed up he's tied into different things. But he's really messed up, and I could see this getting. And this is another criticism that I might have going forward amongst with the is that a lot of people like the MC because you can just get into it. And mm. my fear is that with Kang, you're adding now a further level of complexity to a situation that doesn't necessarily have to be complex because of the nature of his character. If that mm. makes any sense. Well, no, I mean, but look, I think what Disney will stress, and even Feige is. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Like what has mm. made it so successful is that this is very easy to get into. Mm. So they're like the whole complicated stuff was obviously for this TV show, which mm. you guys can because you can go in, go blah blah blah. But I think for the movies, I just think that it's just gonna be a case. I mean, I suppose it's just gonna be a case of like there's just this one Kang mm. who they just have to face, and this Kang just jumping from different timelines. So hence, yeah. we, we, we say it's it's it would make sense for them to bring in Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield mm. for the whole Spider-Man mm. thing. Mm. No, no, I agree, I, I agree. So, and like I said, it would be interesting to see like the, 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 the yeah. Yeah. But yes, 